Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. In today's session we are looking at the glandular epithelium. So we continue looking at the tissues or the types of tissues and we did make mention that we have four principal tissues but we are still looking at the epithelial tissue of which the glandular epithelium also is a part of. We did look at the epithelial tissue and made mention that the first uh, classification would be covering epithelium and then the next one would be glandular epithelium meaning that the epithelial lining of these glands that are in the body now let's quickly look at what the glandular epithelia's role is so the role of glandular epithelia from the term itself gland meaning that it lines glands and glands are known for secretion of their products so it is the purpose of the glandular epithelium to then secrete secrete those fluids, to secrete those digestive enzymes, to secrete all those important components that are then needed for the proper function of the body. So when we're looking at glandular epithelium, we can then break it down into two exocrine glands, or you can have an endocrine gland. So if you have an endocrine gland, these are glands that will then be producing hormones. So these produce hormone elements and the hormone elements that are then produced will then get their way into the interstitial fluid, then diffuse into the bloodstream and then be transported to the target organs and bring about the homeostasis that we see in all those physiological activities of the body. Then we look at the endocrine glands in a separate videos because it is more complex and we see also how those different hormones would then affect their target organs. For this particular session, let's delve in and understand what exocrine glands are. Now what are time, some of the uh, the products of the exocrine glands? So the products of the exocrine glands here will be elements such as sweat, by the sweat glands, you have oil as well, you have wax in the ear, that's earwax, you have issues to do with um, saliva here from the salivary glands and you have also mucus there being uh, produced so we will look at the exo uh, the endocrine glands in another separate video so those will be the exocrine glands now these exocrine glands can take up a form of unicellular glands or they can take up the form of multicellular glands. So the classification of exocrine glands can then further be broken down into two. So number one is going to be the structural classification and then number two you have the functional classification. Now let's start by looking at the structural classification. So if the exocrine gland has only one cell, it means that it is going to be a unicellular gland. So this will be a unicellular gland. If it has more than one cell, then that will be referred to as a multicellular gland. Okay, so if you have a unicellular such as the goblet cells there, you have a unicellular gland. Then you have multicellular glands such as the sweat glands and the salivary glands as well. These multicellular glands can then be further be broken down into either branching or the shape of the secretory portion. So if we're talking about branching, then we will bring branching down here or look at the shape of the secretory portion, meaning that the portion that is actually producing uh, that uh, uh, fluid or producing those digestive enzymes, what is the shape of uh, that uh, part? So when we're looking at branching here, if it is branched, if it is a branched gland, then it is going to be called a compound gland. If it is an unbranched gland, then it is going to be called as a simple gland. 
So that is for the multicellular gland in reference to the branching. Then when we are looking at the uh, shape of when we're looking at the shape of the secretory portion here, so you could have a tubular or an alveolar. So if the type of the gland that is producing the fluid that is required there is in a form of a tube like that, so you have cells all over like that, so these are your cells and this is the part that is then secreting the um, the products of that gland then this is going to be called tubular because it takes up the form of a tube but if the shape of the secretory portion of that gland is an alveolar or an asina meaning that taking the form of alveolize or taking this rounded shape you have cells here which are lining the gland and this is the portion that is secreting that uh, secretory uh, product then this will be called an alveolar gland or an asina gland now if it is a combination of both the alveolar and the tubular so you will have your tubular and the alveolar like that so you have cells lining the gland like that so you have cells you have cells all these are your cells here and these cells are all producing the secretory product meaning that this portion which is the tubular is producing as well as this portion which is the asina is also producing um, the secretory uh, product then this will be a combination of the tube and the asina which will now be called the tubulo asina gland Okay, so that will be the classification of multicellular glands according to the shape of their secretory portion. So it's either it's a tubular, it's an asina, or it's a combination of both, which is a tubular asina. So that is basically an exocrine gland. And for exocrine glands, they do not just produce and package their elements or their products. They have to actually deposit them into a duct and then allow the uh, uh, the secretion to then travel to a uh, lining or covering epithelia and that is why the glandular epithelia is part of the epithelial tissues as well let us look at the functional classification of these exocrine glands so for functional classification what we are going to look at is they can take up forms of what we refer to as merocrine glands apocrine glands and holocrine now for merocrine what is happening here is that you will have your cells here so that is your gland that is producing the secretory product from this gland so if you have that um, gland there it will then produce its elements and package them into secretory vesicles then the secretory vesicles will then bind to the plasma membrane and be released into the duct to then travel to the lining or covering epithelia so that will be merocrine it will produce its elements package into the secretory vesicles into the duct and then allowed out for apocrine what is going to happen now is that you have your cells here that are lining the gland and as they line the gland then they are producing also their secretory product when they have produced their secretory product their secretory product moves towards the apex of the cell so they move towards the apex of the cell and that's why it's called apocrine meaning that apico it moves to the apico element so meaning that it moves to the apico element of the cell and then will later pinch off and be released in the duct to travel to the uh, uh, epithelial lining or the covering uh, epithelium and the remaining cell will have to repair itself and repeat the process again now, we also have the holocrine glands. Now, for the holocrine glands, you are going to have your gland there, which will have its own cells down there. 
so you have these cells so what it is going to do is it produces its a secretory product and once the cell then matures and it has all the uh, the relevant amounts of the secretory product in its relevant uh, constituents and amounts what the cell is going to then do is the cell is going to best and then become the secretory product itself. Meaning that where the cell was, the nearby cells will have to undergo a process of mitosis to cover up the space and then the process repeats itself. So that is the classification according to the functional classification. So those are the classification, the two main classifications, the structural and the functional classification of these exocrine glands. Now the glandular epithelium receives also neuro and hormonal influence to be able to perform these functions. But a take home message is that the glandular epithelium lines these glands and facilitate the production of the secretion of those fluids, the secretion of the digestive enzymes, the sweat, the oil, the earwax, and also the saliva that is coming from the salivary glands. Now, if you did find this particular video helpful in understanding the classification of the glandular epithelia, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share the video as much as possible. Drop me comments in the comments section, drop me comments as well of what you would like to see next. And don't forget to head on to the YouTube channel, to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you do not miss any of the amazing stuff that's coming your way. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.